we are finally getting some nice weather around here. We have had nothing, nothing but rain, which you'd think would be a bad thing. You can't get out to work. But uh, the poet, great poet, uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote, every now and then you look out, talk about that rainy weather, saying every now and then you look out, trying mighty hard to frown, but you can't. You're glad it's raining, because there's time to tinker around. It's wonderful poem called Time to Tinker Around. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to tinker around. In fact, I have some of the books on tinkering, some of the advanced treatises on tinkering to share with you. I'm going to try out some of the gems within these old books. Let's take a look at them. In fact, since uh, we're in the rainy day mode now, looking at uh, these wonderful things to do, we're going to put on a little music here. I've got a little music from about oh, 1880, 1890 here. Let's try now. Yeah, there we go. All right. We'll listen to that as we look through some books. Now let's go back to oh, about 1880, and I'll just show you some of the mood that changed in the time, because you'll, you'll see what I mean here. <laughs> this is an English book called Amateur Work, and this is when the British Empire was still, you know, the, the glory of the world. And you see this uh, just determined-looking woodturner there. Oh, isn't this great? He's working there. Well, that was England, an English book from again about 1880, 1890. Well, after the Great War, certainly people's attitudes changed and it was reflected even in the children's books of the time, particularly in the English books with the great uh, losses they had. This is a book, a children's book from about 1937. And here you see illustrating the fact that the entire population of the earth could be packed into a cube one half mile square and pushed into the Grand Canyon and a hundred years later there'd be nothing but a bunch of edges. I mean that kind of cynicism, that, that, that awfulness that was there. The only thing optimistic in this book after those wars, between, years between the wars, is this. Look here. There is a chance to develop this wonderful system of actually transmitting pictures through the ether along with the wonderful sounds. So what a great thing this will be for culture and for education and even for entertainment there. So a little bit of optimism there. Well, that's it. Let me, I gotta cut this off because now we've moved out of that time of optimism in the late uh, 19th century. Stop, stop. <laughs> and moving on. I'm gonna show you a similar transition done by this. Now this is a real treasure for me. This is my great uncle Calvin's scrapbook he kept since he was a little kid uh, going through very much that same time from the optimism and the, the innocence of the early part of the century to well the the well you'll see here anyway here is a child's scrapbook starts out of course with little invitations and christmas cards and things like that as he gets into it oh uh, well as you see more of the like, colored postcards and things like that and things that would make kids really uh, happy get to levitate a lady or here to make this uh cotton candy machine here so really great stuff he gets interested in making things like oh uh well <laughs> everything from uh trips to new york to the hotel there in the colored postcards up to things that fly now look at the optimism now up here carving out a boomerang out of bent wood and even making a glider so here we are at 1903 in the wright brothers of flying how to make a glider and fly around so look at that optimism that's showing up as we get well we turn the page and we see some more of the collection that my great uncle put in these are cut out of old popular mechanics magazines lots of little things here let's see if i can find here's what this is the page i want here there's uh how to open a bottle i mean goofy things how to open a bottle by slamming it on the wall don't try this at home folks yeah that looks like fun here's a, a motor that works from candle burning at both ends well that, that's a nice one these are items that were sent in by readers this is uh, one from a reader in berkeley california of all things a uh, little pipe frame arrangements to uh wear when you're learning how to roller skate now I don't care, even in a place like Berkeley, if you wear a little suit like that and a beanie like that going around with that, trying, you're going to get beat up. I'm sorry. That's, that's just the way it is. There's a lot of things that changed since then. There's a whole genre of woodworking that we've lost here. This page is things made from barrels. Here is a barrel bicycle boat. You put barrels in the water there and have it turn. Uh, with, you know, it's just a barrel bicycle a boat for planting around, a barrel stave hammock. Yeah, that's good. And, of course, a barrel stave sled. Plenty of these barrel stave uh, toboggans and such. So all kind of cool things. See what's on the next page. This great stuff. This page, nothing but, uh, here, for example, right here. Here's a good one. Uh, nothing but just pages of substitutes for vices. Uh, speaking of vices, we'll see what uh, changed here. 
uh, in just a little bit. But again, cam-operated devices, just, pay, just, just a dozen of them on just these two pages here. So we're going to look through this in a second. I'm going to go through a little bit faster here because we're going to come back and look at some of these. Uh, they are just a wonderful collection of little things sent in, these pasted together. But you see, as he gets older, things start happening. He gets postcards from older siblings, like from Paris, telling him stories of Paris. Uh, you know, mixing in with things like how to bore a square hole. And we get to see how to do that. We're going to look at a bunch of these. He starts getting uh, postcards, you know, colored postcards, even though, I don't know, it's, I'm starting to broaden out his interests a little bit there as he gets older and the woodworking things start going in sideways. You start seeing all kind of stuff here. In fact, you uh, start even finding uh, cartoons from Esquire started being pasted in until uh, the whole thing is nothing but uh, Esquire cartoons. Well, anyway, I won't go any farther in my great uncle's scrapbook from there. Nevertheless, he, uh, you see, he went through that time of innocence of loving to make things. Well, we're going to make a few things. Let's see. I'll start with a practical one right here. I'm going to show you. This is how to make a rabbit plane. And the person writing in says, gosh, you know, rabbit plane, you hardly ever need it. Just take a block of wood, bore a hole through it, put a screw in, put a chisel in and see how it works. All right, well, let's just try that. That's the way to do it. We're going to try it because it's time to tinker around, folks. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to try a rabbit plane. And here you can see I have done it. I've bored the hole through, found a chisel, and marked on the side and cut out for it. And I'm, let's see, I'm going to sight down it. I have to maybe stick my head in the way, but sight down it. And see, and then tighten that bolt. And we're going to see if we can make a rabbit plane that will work. we will try out some of this tinkering around devices from the boy mechanic contributions. These, of course, were bound up and made into volumes now that... Uh, are available. There you go. All right. Now, this is ready to go. We're going to try out the rabbit plane. Now, rabbit plane does not have a fence on it. Rabbit plane does not. It'd be a fillet stir if it had a, a fence on it. So, what you do it is hold your fingers there. They become the fence. And say we want to put a shoulder, and that's what a rabbit is, a shoulder halfway across this piece of wood. Well, we're going to come in with our fingers and try and start it using our fingers as the fence and start it, not going completely halfway, just getting a shoulder started. And I like this hole all the way through because you can clear it out by just poking your finger through. That's pretty nice right there. All right, and then look it up. So it works. Look at that. Just set in at 45 degrees a chisel. And of course, you bring it down to the depth you want, to the lines you want, and then turn the whole thing over. We'll turn the whole thing this way and come back and bring it true to the center and true it and we have cut a rabbit so it works there we got this nice shoulder cut with our homemade chisel rabbit plane out of the boy mechanic all right let's look at some of the other things there's uh, this is one that's going to show up uh, later on a rattle and this was again something very popular at the, at the time and i've made one here again you can see the gears and the hickory and the way this works is you swing it around. Let me try swinging this around now. All right, and this will come in later. Uh, now, this is the American response to this, this gadgetry. Now, you think this, well, you'll see what I mean. I think this had a big influence on 20th century history, the way this worked. In fact, here, look at this one now. This is called a ski do ski dee trick, and that is, of course, something we know better as the gee haw Wimmy diddle and I'm going to work a little G haw Wimmy diddle there it is a little G haw Wimmy diddle and the way that works is of course you hold it and you rub it and go G or skidoo and it will spin in one direction let's get it going there we go yeah all right and then of course it'll go in the other direction if you want to just say the other hoo ha 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 no go ski ski go the other way go the other way hey go the other way whoa 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 now, I don't think too much. You don't think too much. It's just a, a stick and you rub it. All right, but there's a trick to it, of course, to making it work. And believe it or not, there was actually in this magazine a scientific explanation that we're going to see later. That came in a later volume. We're going to see how that worked. All right, so let's move along and look at some of the other puzzles done on uh, rainy days in Great Uncle's scrapbook. Let's start with the... All right, here's one. Look at this. Uh, in fact, this is this is just too goofy. Let me show it to you right here. I love the story though. It's so. Oh, 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 I dropped the key to the puzzle here. In fact, that was it. It was. It says that a certain king offered to give a prince his freedom if he could make a plug that would fit all these different size holes. One plug that would do all of them. That it would do a circle. Would do a square. A triangle. 
and an oblong. Ah, and said, I'll give you your freedom if you can make a plug that will fill all these different ones. And of course, this is what the prince made. He made a piece that would indeed fit a square and plug it. It will indeed fit a round hole and plug it. And it will indeed fit a triangle. Yeah. And it will indeed close an oblong there. Yeah. So this is it. Now, what kind of king is going to come up with that kind of thing? It's pretty dumb, but anyway, this is kind of a cool thing to make. Flies love it. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, it's another thing. It's a wonderful fly guaranteed to kill any insect. All right. So another great thing for that rainy day. Let's see. How do you make this uh, plug? Obviously, let's look at just one obvious thing and then I'll sh uh, illustrate it again. If something has got to be cylindrical that will also fit a square hole, then obviously the height is equal to the diameter. So the diameter and this are equal. So that's all you have to do to make this. Let me show you real quick. Because, uh, you know, how much time do you want to devote to this? If you can do it faster, that's, that's great. So you come to the lathe, you turn out your plug, and you may want to turn this to match a uh, hole. If you have an auger, you're going to bore a hole and do this. Go ahead and do that. Rainy day work. Right. Bring it on down. In fact, the lathe, I think, is the classic rainy day work. All right, and then, whatever the diameter is, whatever the diameter turns to be, That is how wide, how long you make it. Right. And then take your cutoff tool. And cut it off. Your parting tool. Alright, I'm going to part it up here at this end. Part it all the way off. Whoa, there we go. All right, so now it came all the way off. So now we have that cylinder that is the same long as it is uh, wide in diameter. Now take that and saw that down to make this very easy. I put this in the vise and saw it as such. Uh, take just a line, a straight edge, and put a line right through that center. And that's, that's really the only line you need. The rest of it is going to be sawing down. To saw down that face at an angle that, well, let's see if I've just eyeballed it just right. If not, what the heck? It's a rainy day, and who knows what I will invent. Oh, gosh. All right. So you can see I'm going to run out. A little close, you, know, you saw the other side. <laughs> and aim right for that edge. Well, let's, let's put it this way. You want to work so that you come out uh, over, uh, not touching the edge. There you go. There you go. You saw it off like that. And then saw off the other one. And of course, that, that, that's perfect as well. And then bring it down with a block plane, say and make, you'll have made it very quickly. Yeah. You'll end up with this shape there. Yeah, nice. All right, and then that, of course, will fit on there. You can make the square very easily. And lay it out with the circle. If you, of course, the diameter of the circle here is the same as the diameter of uh, the width, length of the oblong here. So I just squared up across. And then the same thing, this, draw, put this on as a circle make it into a square, and then same thing, it's the same as the base of the triangle, and the height of the triangle is the same, so it actually fits through there. So you get the idea of the geometry of this thing. All right, now you think about it, let me get my point here. This is what the America, Americans were doing, reading these mechanics magazines, boys uh, in the early part of the century reading these things, and getting this gadgetry, this sense of making things, solving problems. How can we do it? I don't know, we'll take around, figure out something. Probably, well, remember, this is the same generation that was on the beaches at Normandy trying to get through the hedgerows, and the Sherman tanks were coming up, and they got a Panzerfaust in the stomach there. 
So bad stuff. These are the guys who say, all right, well, uh, let me do it. let's stick a uh, fork on the front and we'll just bust our way through this thing. So you get those rhino horns. It's that kind of American inventiveness that may probably changed the shape of, of, of history all right, in the 20th century there. So wonderful stuff. Let's move on here. Oh, here's a cool one. All right, this is a bank. A bank. You can't get your money out of this thing now. You can't get out. In fact, this is some cedar. This is great. I like this because it's made out of cedar uh, left over from the, uh, I had left over from the great uh, humidor panic of 98, I guess it was, if I had to make a humidor. Well, this is a bank out of cedar. You cannot take this apart. The only way you can open it is by breaking one of these boards. In fact, let me see if I can just break it with my thumbs. It's not the, uh, I can't do it. I'm going to have to set it down here on the bench and split it. Because it's the only way to show you how this thing is put together is to go ahead and open it up by splitting it. There we go. And now, <laughs> maybe I can put it back that together. Yeah, you can hear the coins in there rattling around. Now I can get my money out. Yeah, big money. All right. So the way this is made, of course, it's uh, kind of a neat uh, device here, a neat plan. Each piece is identical going across with a little shoulder here that fits in. I'll give you those measurements. And this fi the fi each one, it assembles like this. And then the last one, in fact, let's see if we can just do it like this. The last one goes in. You have to spring it in. So your precision is very important in, in making the measurements. The last one, I'm just going to have to make another one in just a second there. So this last one is made by springing it in. Slip that under there. Uh, you got to get this down in there. All right, and spring it in. So you push that in, and it makes a. All right, and that'll push down until it locks. You got to soak that. You got to bevel it and push down, and it'll pop into place. Pop into pop into. All right. So anyway, you see, it's real hard to get together. Impossible to get apart. Let's look at how you make the pieces, though. All right. As so I've got this very quickly, you can actually do this mainly with a knife. And of course, you're talking about tinkering around. That's what you're going to be using is a knife. But there's some other cool tools. Let's see. All right. And I have laid this piece out. And I've got my knife. Gosh, I can't believe it. I didn't misplace it. Hurrying along here. Let's look at the measurements. Now, I've got a 10-inch uh, wide piece of, what is this? 3 8 inch? Yeah, 3 8 inch thick cedar here. Whatever. 3 8 inch popular, poplar, hardwood. Doesn't matter. Come in a half inch then three-eighths of an inch, and then I believe it's two and three-quarters of an inch to the next one, and then do the, your next run of three-eighths inch wide, and I'll make this a little wider here. So again, one, two, oh, three, four, deep cuts. Now, I like working with this wood because this is, of course, cigar box wood, and this was something that kids had to work with. Uh, very rare now as uh, only adults go and spend a lot of money to get this kind of wood, but it used to be kids would get this stuff from old cigar boxes, and you could make this out of cigar boxes. Had that wonderful combination of the cedar smell and the. I'm going to bevel this line right here. Just bring that knife on down. Make a little groove. Yeah, and that's so my saw will run in that. All right, so now I've got to just dig out that groove there. It's just wonderful to work with this stuff. Sliding along, uh, sliding along, taking too big a bite there. Uh, taking too big a bite. There we go. Should just curl out by kind of plane it along. All right, and that will bring it down. We've got to go down a depth of one eighth inch deep in three eighths of an inch. Try this little wider chisel here. All right, and then blah blah blah. That's not working. Let's try this one. Here's a little router plane. You can see the little uh, tooth that hangs just below there. Router plane. Work it across. We got a stop to work against. That's nice. And we'll see we're not quite cut to the full depth. Pull back this way. All right, blah blah blah. Cut that across. Great stuff. Thank you, Chris. I'm hurrying, but you wouldn't have to hurry on a rainy day. That's the whole point of this. You're figuring stuff out. You're not working production. This is when you mend the old mule's harness and fixes that thing. Time to tinker around. All right, so now, using this dado plane with its skewed iron, I'm getting stuff that kids might not have. But again, cutting those grooves three eighths of an inch wide, eighth inch deep. And now your final thing is to saw across. Right. Down that groove that you made. You saw down that groove. Uh, uh. 
binding. All right, and now we've got to cut off an exactly three inch wide piece. And do that using a cutting gauge. Here's a gauge with a knife on it rather than a scratcher. It has a knife three inches, is set three inches in. And I was careful to square the stock ahead of time. Again, make several passes. And here again, several passes across. This is great stuff. But you could do this again with the knife. The gauge just makes it a little faster. And you can go ahead and break that and cut it again with the knife just to clear some of the fibers. And now, let's see, I use the block plane. And of course, it's the block plane and the coping saw that just are the tools for kids, aren't they? Yeah. Block plane, bring it on down, and that's it. Now you've got that piece. You make six of these pieces like this. This last one that I'm trying to spring down, in order to get it to spring, I'll have to trim it. And you see how all these pieces interlock. You just build this up, interlocking these things. But this last one has to go in like this. Trim down with a knife. Cut that right there. Trim down with a knife. Slip that under there. Right, and that fits in like that. Da, da, da. And then you can spring it down in there. Ah, pop. All right, what the heck? You get the idea. I have to spring it on down and you make this bank box. Again, something from the boy mechanic. All right, what else have we got? All right, talking about things that have to go together and come apart. I'm going to show you one now. This is the dovetail. We dovetail stuff together. We have dovetail drawers all the time. Uh, this is a dovetail that is dovetailed on four sides. Kind of a cool thing here. You see how this is dovetailed around all four directions so it can never come apart. The downside of this design is uh, this, of course, can never go together. It's dovetailed all the way around. It's impossible. It's an impossible joint. Uh, of course, because it can't work, you can't have dovetails around all four sides unless you go diagonal. Yes, indeed. All right, so this is a diagonal dovetail. So it shows how to do that. That's one of the puzzles. Uh, how to bore a square hole. Gosh, oh, and of course, the way you do this is lay out the dovetails on each of the faces. Lay out the dovetails on the faces. Instead of drawing your lines to saw and chisel on across at right angles, you go diagonally. So you get two equally sized pieces of wood, draw on your dovetails and connect them diagonally and make sure you do the reverse of one onto the other and you can make this four-headed dovetail. So that's in the book there. All right. So lots of stuff. Let's see if I can finish up with that square hole. I have got uh, a piece of leather now. This doesn't work in anything much more than this, but you can bore a hole, a square hole, according to this book. By this method, fold over a piece of leather between two boards. I'm just reading from memory because I grew up with these books myself. I, I had a later version. We'll work this right down. So we'll go. All right, boring down right in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see how that went. Yeah. All right, and that, of course, shows you how <laughs> you can bore a square hole. Yeah. There you go. So great stuff. Well, anyway, those are just some of the things that kids used to tinker around with. The one I had when I was a kid's right here, an odd little uh, thing to just leave you with this. This is, again, from 37, but I had this when I was a kid. A little thing you can make just to show how bizarre this is. A little, uh, this is during the Spanish uh, Civil War. You got these guys in the fascist helmets with a roller skate tank with a little tig running alongside there in the ruined city. Hey, nothing says fun like a sidewalk tank. But well, anyway, that's it. Just stuff to take around with. Thanks for joining me on this rainy day. It's Roy Underhill in the Woodwright Shop. So long. Learn more about the Woodwright Shop and traditional woodworking at PBS Online. You can find us at pbs.org. To order a video cassette of this episode of The Woodwright Shop, The Boy Mechanic, or other episodes from the series, call PBS Home Video at 1 800 Play PBS.